So why don't I buy Omegang beer anymore? So at my restaurant in Aroma Time, we used to have a lot of Omegang beer, and we still do have a good amount of like the Three Philosophers, because I really stocked up on the Three Philosophers. It's a, a quadruple style beer that ages beautifully. And I used to buy every single Omegang beer release that was out there. We had Omegang Wit on tap, straight for the first five years that I was open, Omegang Wit was the beer the wit beer I had on tap, it never changed. Omegang Wit, Brooklyn Brown, we had our classics, our standards when we first opened. I didn't experiment as much, but I just had good beer. And don't get me wrong, Omegang makes awesome beer, but I don't stock them anymore. I'm gonna tell a personal story, a uh, business story about Omegang, that's just why, because people ask me all the time, why don't you have it, why don't you have it? They make good beer, Marcus, they make great beer. And I'm like, you know what? Omegang does make awesome beer. Omegang makes insanely good beer, but they're not good business people. And basically, I feel they screwed me, it's my personal opinion, and uh, I'm gonna share that. So I was at a Omegang, in fact, the CEO of Omegang, Simon, would introduce me to people, to other people as, this is Marcus from Aroma Time, the man who has more Omegang titles than Omegang themselves. That's because I would buy the Omegang beers and I would always stockpile them and save them. And then on my list, I'd have like 30 different Omegang titles. People are like, wow, that's awesome. Right now I have maybe less than six left. Um, and a lot of their beers do age well. Some of them don't, but a lot of their beers do age very, very well. So, why am I not buying Omegang beer anymore? Back at one of their muscle tussles or hop hop chef competitions, first they had a muscle tussle in at the brewery, and I was one of the chefs that was invited there to compete against six other chefs, and it was a great weekend. They put us up in a hotel, my wife and I, wined us and dined us. They did, they did all this TV work and shot video of us, and we did this all-out competition. It was great. And, uh, and that was just a courtesy that they did because I was such a good customer and they knew who I was and had a great beer list and we do great food at the restaurant. Then I went the following year to their Hop Chef competition in Albany, New York. And at the Hop Chef competition, I made a Three Philosophers fig and raw cacao ice cream, raw chocolate ice cream with cacao nibs in it. I basically took figs, dried organic black mission figs, soaked the Three Philosophers in them, made a jam out of that and then mixed that into an ice cream blend with the cacao nibs and I put goji berries in there. We were serving this ice cream all night at this, at this competition in Albany, New York. I'm not even from Albany. I'm an hour and a half away from Albany. All the other five chefs there were from Albany. So it was a people's choice contest that night. It just meant people had to walk in and write down and vote and drop in your box. So I'm the only outsider there. Everybody else is from Albany. They have their followings, this and that. And I lost that night by two votes. And guess what? I didn't vote and neither did my staff. My two staff members I was with, my wife and Kevin, didn't vote that night. None of us voted that night. We didn't realize we could vote. And we lost by two votes. And I'm like the underdog because it's not even my territory. That's how good the ice cream was. So Simon, the CEO of Oma Gang, says, I want your ice cream. I want your ice cream in our cafe. I love it so much. I said, great. So we started talking about possibly distributing this, but me making batches in a commercial kitchen so I have to have a co-packer. Then I have to have a distributor. I have to have a supplier for all the products. And then Oma Gang would have to post these deep discounts for the beer so I could buy the beer by the pallet load. This was like gonna be like a big thing. I was like, wow, Oma Gang is in 48 states here in the, in the mainland 48 states or whatever, most states. They have a great relationship with Whole Foods. I'm gonna be making this Oma Gang ice cream. I'm, I'm thinking the potential's unlimited. This is great, this is awesome, this is my ticket. And I spent on and off of, of just over a year developing this product because I had to go to a co-packer, to an ice cream manufacturer already. I had to find one first that was willing to let me come into their facility and say, hey, I got a recipe. Can you make it for me? Can you package this for me? And of course, when you're making a two and a half gallon batch, 
it's much different than making a 35 gallon batch or a 50 gallon batch. So we had to tweak the recipe so much to actually get it into the bulk. And I worked on this and worked on this. I was able to get a distributor to take it from Kingston, New York to Omegang to deliver it to the brewery. I worked out everything, prototype after prototype of the ice cream work. I showed up with the ice cream to Omegang. And meantime, for this whole year, we were in constant contact about how things are progressing and moving forward and and I should have something you know I got a distributor now and I got this and I'm gonna bring you another prototype I made two trips up there with prototypes of the ice cream they loved it they loved it I had everything lined up basically just to pull the trigger that was the last thing left pull the trigger and start production ready to go and all of a sudden I stopped hearing from them I stopped hearing from the person who was in charge of the food program I stopped hearing from them and a month later, a good friend of mine is in the uh, brewery at Omega Gang Brewery in the cafe. Cause they have a beautiful cafe. There. It's a beautiful brewery. I've never gone. It's an awesome brewery. Um, they are Belgium owned uh, by a Belgian family. Uh, they did buy Boulevard in Kansas City. So, a friend of mine's there, and he's texting me. He goes, Marcus, I've got some of your ice cream. It's delicious. And I said, My ice cream? How do you have my ice cream? He goes, it's on the menu. I said, send me a picture of the menu. So he sent me a picture of the menu, and sure enough, it was a fig and chocolate three philosopher ice cream. I was like, but that's not my ice cream. That's not my ice cream at all. So I immediately text the CEO. I'm like, what's going on? I see this on the menu there, this and that. People are telling me, yeah, this. the answer I got from them, the official answer was, oh, that's the recipe of the first chef we hired at our Oma Gang Cafe. I'm like, so you had a chef that just happened to make something very similar to my product that was your first chef at the Oma Gang Cafe long before you talked to me about doing this, then why did you why did you come to me? Why did you come to me to do all this work when you just had your recipe from your first chef? Which I think personally is a big lie. Because if you did have that, you wouldn't waste my time doing something. You wouldn't waste my time doing all this work and saying, oh, we're excited about this, this, and this, and me deliver you a prototype after a couple prototypes, that, that wouldn't be necessary. You could have just, you could have told me at the Hop Chef competition in Albany, oh, our first chef at the cafe made something very similar to this. It's a great, it's a great thing. But it's just, it's kind of ironic how after I delivered the prototypes that all of a sudden it's on their menu. So after that, I was like, I just, I, I can't give Oma Gang money. I can't. Simon's a nice guy. Simon and I got along well. I mean, I used to text each other. We, had, we saw each other. We had a great time. But I just can't do business. And whether it was his decision, whether it was a legal decision from the Oma Gang Foods thing, whether it was a corporate decision out of Belgium, whatever, whatever it was, I feel like I got screwed and I feel like I got shafted on that. So for me, why in the world would I buy and support Oma Gang beer? Doesn't make sense. I'm uh, not going to support somebody who did that to me. They make great beer. Yes, they do. They make fantastic beer, but just not, 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 not what I can do. It's not in my heart to give them any money. Um, and after I've told this story to people, I've never talked about this on camera before. And this is this is four or five years old now. Never spoken on camera. So after I told this story to some other people in the industry, some other beer people, they're like, that's Oma Gang for you. That's that Belgian mentality. They're hard to do business with. They're basically bastards, Belgian bastards. They go, but you know, it goes beyond just them. They go, a lot of Belgian people run their business like that. They're just ruthless. They're ruthless, ruthless. They go, so that's no surprise really. And these people knew, um, knew I'm a gang from because they, they're in the beer industry they're like that doesn't surprise us totally doesn't surprise us so oh well so I don't even make that ice cream at the restaurant anymore I totally stopped that there was no reason for me to even continue with that I don't have their wasn't buying their beer but yes so I do have some of their beer left at the restaurant I have some of their three philosophers going back to 2005 it's a fantastic beer it's aged beautifully it's a quadruple high alcohol and I probably have six, seven vintages of that um, from 2005. Um, so when customers do order that, they get a really, really awesome treat. 
So no more Oma Gang beer at Aroma Time Restaurant. No more Oma Gang beer. I won't drink it when I'm out. No, I don't give them any money. I'm Chef Marcus Giuliano. What's your opinion on that? What would you do if uh, somebody did that to you? If you like this video, please hit like, subscribe to my channel, and definitely pass it on and share this. And, and I don't know, just share it. Share it. Spread the word. No Oma Gang.